Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of ScreenFlow Live. I think, what number is it? Episode 22 of ScreenFlow Live. Today, we're talking all about flotility, which I'll tell you a little bit more about, and then we'll dive deep into all the flotility assets that you might be able to use. Um, and so, yeah, today is all about learning about flotility, how to use it in your ScreenFlow project. Stick around. We'll be right back. Think we're back uh, today like I said we're talking about flotility but before we do that I just want to make sure that you guys know that generally you can watch us on multiple platforms I think we're having a little bit of an issue with our YouTube platform today but we're definitely on Facebook you can follow us I think you would know that because you're watching on Facebook right now but on uh, facebook.com slash screenflow you can find us on Twitter at screenflow and then screenflow tube on YouTube so just type in screenflow tube into YouTube and you should be able to find our channel you can also sign up to get notifications for when we go live. Um, there should be a little uh, a little URL there underneath me pretty soon here when uh, it tells you when you can or where you can sign up for that uh, for that email to say, "Hey, we're live right now." I don't remember it off the top of my head, and I don't have a confidence monitor today, so we're gonna have to get you guys that that uh, URL if it doesn't pop up, but. That being said, oh, there we go. Telestream.net slash ScreenFlow Live. That's right. That being said, I am monitoring comments on Facebook. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and ask me there. But uh, with that, we're just going to jump right in because flotility, let me show you what flotility is here. If you come to our website, let's go to Telestream.net. If you come to our website, go to Products, go to ScreenFlow. At the very bottom of the ScreenFlow page, all the way down right here it says make your videos pop with flotility you have the flotility motion graphics library and the flotility pro transitions pack and today we're going to talk about each one of those we're going to go through all of them ways you can customize them ways you can use them um, just to see you know just to give you some idea about how it's useful and how you can be used in your projects your screen flow projects it is $47 for the flotility motion graphics library and $30 for the pro transitions pack so this is not a free add-on but if uh, if you like what you see maybe check it out so when you do buy it you'll download a whole bunch of files I have them here in my flotility folder and you can see it says flotility objects bullets backgrounds countdown timers lower thirds touch gestures flotility transition transitions and the pro transitions pack now they will in in both of these instances they interact in a different way this this first set of things all of the transitions um, the touch gestures lower thirds that stuff that will just always be a piece of media on your computer. So in ScreenFlow, you can come over to your media library, add a new file, navigate to that flotility document, open up a lower third, choose it, open it, and boom, you got your lower third in your project, just like that. Easy peasy, ready to go. Now, there is something slightly different here in that the transitions, if we come to our global library, let's grab the Telestream intro, let's zoom it nice and big, and then bring in my favorite video, the face down walk. When I make the transition, already, once I've downloaded these transition packs, which is this one right here, open up the zip, zip and run the uh, installer, built into ScreenFlow, when I right click on this, on this, um, transition area you can say show transition inspector and in the transition inspector oh my computer's running real slow right now you have all favorites and then flotility so these are the flotility transitions we'll get into them we'll take a look at them but those are going to be built into ScreenFlow once you download them so going back to our website 
Flotility Motion Graphics Library, that's an entire set of graphics, MOV files, images, movies that you can pull in to your ScreenFlow projects. And then Flotility Pro Transitions Pack, this second one, that's a set of transitions that are going to be built into ScreenFlow that you can just select and use as a transition when you're making videos in ScreenFlow. So that's how you get it. Um, and then once it's on your computer, you can really just start going to town on it. And uh, it's actually easier to show you them outside of ScreenFlow because I can just cycle through each one. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up and show you a lot of different examples of some of the content that comes in these transition packs and the motion graphics pack. Um, and then we're going to customize some of them and see some cool stuff that you can do with them. So let me double check we got no questions, which we don't, by the way. I don't know. We don't usually get a lot of questions, but please ask me questions. Makes me feel real happy. Oh, I also wanted to say tomorrow we're doing a webinar. Um, if you go to our events page on our website, you can find the sign up link for that. We're going back to the basics. We're going to spend an hour just looking at all the basics of ScreenFlow from recording to editing to exporting and sharing, whatever it is. As long as it's a basic thing that you can do, we're going to talk about it and I'll be answering questions the whole time as well. If you don't get what you're looking for today in this ScreenFlow Live. Excuse me. So let's move out of ScreenFlow. Let's open up this and we can see like if I open up one of these folders, we've got a ton of different um, ton of different movies that we can pull in here. What is I don't even know how to count that many. That's got to be like 50 plus just for um, the objects and bullets, they call it. You've got your backgrounds. You've got your countdowns and timers and your flotility lower thirds. Touch gestures if you're doing any sort of uh, eye device work. And then flotility transitions. And these all come in um, not as the transitions pack, a little bit different than transitions pack. But let's go through here and let's talk about them. So if we open up the first one, we look at objects and bullets. Bullet point, flotility 3000 bullet point. When I open this up and play this movie, boring, right? It's just a bullet point that comes up. But watch what happens now if I go into ScreenFlow. Let's uh, delete what I've got here. And here. And let's type, before we bring that in, let's, let's make a couple text boxes. Let's say Lucas, Trevor. Well, let's do one text box at a time. Lucas, Trevor. Oops. and Deborah Lee. So those are the three people that are working on this project right now because I'm in front of the camera and Deborah Lee and Trevor are behind the scenes making sure everything runs smoothly. So what we have now is just a quick little fade in. Let's make it about a second difference between the three pieces of material. And we've got a second fade in between the three names that pop onto the screen. If we show it from the beginning, this is what it looks like. Oh wait, let's change their location. Let's bring Trevor down a little bit and then let's bring Deborah Lee down as well. So now we've got all three of these people showing up. But what I can do now with that little tiny animated bullet point, I'll come over here to my uh, media library, choose a file, navigate to this um, area that has the Objects and bullets, where was it? Was it rough bullet point? I don't believe so. It was just called bullet point. How come it's not showing up as the same? That's, that's obnoxious. There, it's at the bottom for some reason. All right, so now I can pull this in, and I want three of them, so I'll just pull it into the timeline and then copy, copy, Command C to copy it, and then Command V to paste it two more times. Oops, I don't want the lower third. I want the bullet point, that's right. So I'll grab it, copy, paste three times. So now I have three bullet points. So now starting a little bit before that, and then also as the other names come into play, here, let's move this all the way up here. 
and then let's move this all the way up as well and I can go there and here for Deborah Lee so now what I want to do is come back in and change the size of these because if I go back to the beginning you see whoa that's not in the right spot none of these are the right size so let's highlight all three of them make them significantly smaller and put the first one there the second one's going to drop down for Trevor and the third one is going to drop down for Deborah Lee. Now if we zoom in on this, we can see what happens. Let's see here. Perfect. So now what I have is this little tiny animated bullet point that comes in as I'm adding text to my screen. Let's change the background so we can see that a little bit easier. Let's make it a brown maybe. There we go. That works. So the only thing I don't like about this now, though, is that these disappear when I'm done. But because they're video files, I can't just extend them any further. What I have to do is come up to the very end of it and then do Shift-Command-F, and that's going to create a freeze frame of the frame that my scrubber is on. So what you can see here is once now the video ends, it just stays there the whole time. And I can copy, paste two more of those put them at the end of each of the videos, extend them out to the end. And now I have a nice little bullet pointed list of text. Lucas, Trevor, Deborah Lee. Oh, you know what I did? I forgot to move where these are. So what I did there was not necessarily the best. It's better to just go in and create a new freeze frame for each one because what I did was I just copied the first one and it remembered its exact positioning so it wasn't able to show up where I actually wanted it so I'm going to go to the end of this one and then make another freeze frame that's once again shift command F to freeze frame it and now we have what I actually wanted there we go so that's how you can use these bullet points and that's just one of a billion different things so let's try let's see what the butterfly looks like Interesting. It's just the flapping of a butterfly. Uh, let's see. See if we can find a good one. I don't really know how I would use the butterfly personally. <laughs> I was just looking at that and thinking, mm, seems a little sketchy. But something like a check mark, an animated check mark, I could get real on board with using an animated check mark. And it's got a nice little happiness to it. I, I know it sounds weird. A little Bob Rossian. Maybe here's a happy cloud as well. Yeah, just comes into play. We've got the dollar sign. Uh, we've got the, you know, the start from the beginning. Green light, what does that look like when it plays through? Same thing as the other one. That's just a different color. Green leaf, last frame, light switch. I wonder if that turns something on and off. Yep. Turns kind of like a light off, flips it up. So you could use that like if you're trying to tell a story and... Someone says something, oh, that's a really good idea. You use the light switch. This one I like a lot because, I mean, we all know how effective it is. If you've ever watched a YouTuber, they're like, hey, man, don't forget to subscribe and like my video, and it's awesome. And sometimes that little self-promotion is a little annoying, but it really is effective. When I watch people live streaming on YouTube, I'll say, hey, look, we have 150 likes. Let's get that up to 200, and then 30 seconds later, they've got like 300 because people just forget to do that, and it's really good for your social media scoring if people are liking and subscribing. So here's a like this video. And that looks real slick in my opinion. So when you're, when you're talking in your video, let's go put this into ScreenFlow here. Let's move this guy this way into my other... Because I can just click and drag it into ScreenFlow, which is something I actually like a little bit better. Let's pull this in here. Let's see how big it is. That's way too big. I want it to just be a little bit smaller and in the bottom corner. So I can say, hey, look, we've got Lucas, Trevor, and Deborah Lee. And don't forget to like this video. And you know what would be really cool, actually, is to animate. You can animate... On a, on a surface level, any of these elements that you pull in from um, Flotility. So here, I'm going to add a video action, which, if you guys remember, is Command-K. Always be using your, uh, your hotkeys. So what I want it to do is I want it to start really small. And then I want it to get really big. 
And then I want it to get really small again. So I'm going to do Option Command K, which is the video snapback option, option. So that will bring it up to the big and then make it small again. So if we put them together, it looks like this. Big, small. But I want it to... I want, I want to see that part, right? That's what I want to see. So I'm going to go to the very beginning of this. And I'm going to make this video action really fast. And that way it pops up, does its quick little animation, and then drops back in. So now I've got a nice little moment for me to say... You've now been watching my video. Here's my bulleted list. And make sure to like and subscribe these videos if you want to see more content from ScreenFlow Live, blah, blah, blah. This actually should be moved a little bit because it was out of place. But there you go. You can, you can use these elements in and out. Let's see what other cool stuff we've got. Here's a Facebook like this video. That's a little bit more uh, proprietary there. Got the little thumbs up if you know you're going to be uh, exporting your videos for uh, use on Facebook. This is a real handy little animation to make sure that people are liking videos because like we all know in Facebook so and so liked this video and they liked it because you remembered to tell them to like it lock icon minus sign pause play plus a little price tag if you're selling something is on sale rectangle stop movie ah very similar it's just the rectangle uh, it converted it I don't want to deal with that right now Here's a subscribe button if you want to do that. Once again, these are all animated, which is really nice. And you, of course, I've taught you in the past, you can make these animations yourself if you want, but it's really nice to have it built in, ready to go. You don't have to deal with creating these things and spending the time to do it. Here's some more subscribe buttons, better looking subscribe buttons, in my opinion. Scissors, uh, buffering, if you want to show, like, hey, maybe I make a software that the competitors is really bad you can bring in this buffering tool or this buffering element pull it into the middle play it and it just says ah buffering my comp my competitor stuff is not as good let me check the comments real fast make sure i'm not leaving anyone hanging myra myra shedlerup wow that's an awesome last name Awesome, awesome like Bischoff Burger. Um, we are not able to stream to YouTube today for uh, really no good reason, unfortunately. We just couldn't get the uh, stream to be working over at YouTube, so it's only on Facebook today. Uh, thanks for coming over here to see us, but uh, we, we are trying to get them always up on YouTube, but sometimes it's a little bit more difficult. All right, let's uh, go back here. Look at this. And we've got our pencils and the rough arrows and more buffering. Ooh, this one I thought was really cool. Let's do the Earth MOV. So I was looking at this one, and I wasn't really sure. I'm going to try something here that I think is pretty awesome. We'll see if it works. So first of all, let's just look at it. It's just the Earth rotating, right? But let's say that I wanted to talk about something that was happening in Los Angeles. So I could be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so now what we've got going on, or let's say it's in, in Central Africa, in, around in here. I'm going to say, and you know what? Let's just go straight. I've got footage of my friend who was in Africa doing something, and he, and he photoed himself. And I say, hey, look, I want you guys to see what, what my super awesome friend in Africa was doing. So what I'm going to do, let's make believe that what he was doing was cooking. <laughs> and so we're going to pull that in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a video action here. And this is something you'll see like on news reports or, or things like of that nature. Let's zoom way in to the middle of this. And I can zoom out and go like this right there into Central Africa, which I think is going to be because that's about where we want it to be. So there's Central Africa. So I'm going to make this a little bit longer. Let's see how this looks if we zoom back in. And let's go. Yep. We've got to change the curve type because I want it to be pretty much infinite. So I'm going to make it, uh, let's go ease in. Let's try ease in. Yeah, that's good. Make it a little bit longer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the face shot on top and give it a starting transition. So now that's going to fade nicely in. 
And so what I'm trying to say here is let's go to my friend Bill, who's in Central Africa doing a cooking show. And we zoom into Africa, and then there's Bill talking about it. So you can use something like that world to bring your viewers around the world and zoom in. Uh, that, that was something that I thought was pretty cool. Um, blank alert, progress bars. These are just like, to some extent, just random stuff that you m might never use. But... If you've got a little bit of creativity behind you, you're like, oh, I know exactly where I can use this piece of media. And that's what I'm thinking right now as I go through all of these. Um, oh, this is always good. The, the low battery into the full battery and then the opposite. Oh, my batteries are drained and I think you have the opposite one here. So you just have all of these little tiny animations. Retweet something, upload it. Here's another spinning world and flotility color bars if you ever wanted to use something like this. I think that's pretty cool. But those are just the elements. So as we continue moving on, you have other types of media that is built into this flotility package. The next would be backgrounds. And let's see how we, if we can pull some of these into screen flow because I'm pretty sure that they are animated otherwise they wouldn't be video files let's go to my uh, project library and pull it in here put this on top and yeah, there you go that is fully animated backgrounds and one thing I like to do with this is I sometimes think that in a background like this when you have something in the foreground if we put you know a, a video if we go back to my favorite video again of, of this guy cooking, make it a little bit smaller. So we put him in the middle, right? I kind of feel like he gets a little bit lost because the colors are so bright and it's so sharp in the background that you sometimes will look at the background instead of the video that's playing in front of it. And one way to, to use this background because it does look really cool is we can kind of go, let's go to the video first and let's add a corner round to the video. See how that kind of like it takes the it takes the sharp points of the video off, and that can really help with helping it to blend into the background and not pop off so much. You could even add a little reflection. Um, I'm going to boost the reflection so you can see what I'm talking about down there a little bit lower. But if you make that a little bit opaque, it helps to float on top as well. Now the last thing I want to do is I want to add a video filter to the background. Because what a video filter on the background is going to do, especially if we use something like a Gaussian blur. It's going to help to really lower the intensity of those colors. So without the blur, it's very sharp. But once you add just even even like a 16-point blur, now you still have that color movement in the background, but now your video pops just a little bit more. You add that round and the, and the reflection underneath, and you have a nice little color movement in the background, but it doesn't overtake the video that you're trying to show, which is... My buddy cooking in Central Africa, right? <laughs> so that's that's one way that you can customize some of these backgrounds. And there's lots of other ones. That that one's pretty striking. This one is much more mellow. If we were to switch this one around, I don't want to put that in my global library. Let's put it in my normal library. There we go. Now let's pull this in on top of everything. Let's get my timeline back, and I actually want to put this underneath my video. Let me put this over. So now we have we have it's a much more subtle movement in the background. If I if I take uh, the video off here, you can see that there's just slow movement happening in the background. But with the video on top, it, it does a really good job of framing what's going on because I really do like having that subtly dynamic background when I want to show something without it taking over the whole background. Uh, one other thing to help it pop that I forgot about until just now is adding a little bit of a drop shadow. We can customize that a little bit. Let's do a little bit less offset and less opaque. Just helps it to pop out just that little bit more. And when you're using these backgrounds, you have all of these options and they, they move just slightly this one looks like it would be real hard to see anything in front of whoa that kind of hurts my eyes but once again really cool colors moving it saves you a lot of trouble without having to go through and then of course 
who doesn't love the matrix, right? You have this. You know how difficult it would be to create something like this? You'd have to, oh, it would take hours because each one of those number changes, you would have to animate, nest all the clips, and then add something on top if you were going to do that in ScreenFlow. Now you just have it. It's ready to go. This one looks nice too. I think it's just a yeah, slowly shifting plaid block structure. So you can see the difference between t these two. Like this flotility background, uh, the matrix background, that would be rough to use as a background because it's so dynamic and there's so many strong colors, but... Something like this would be really nice in the background of a photo montage either, even. Or you have the old film look, which is pretty cool. I wonder, I wonder about this. Let's try something with this old film look. Let's pull this in. And let's put this on top. Is it see-through? Ah. Oh. It is not, unfortunately. I thought maybe it was uh, see-through and you could just apply it on top of any of your videos. Um, and then, of course, basic color backgrounds. That's just a JPEG if you want to use that. Um, but there are your backgrounds built into Flotility. Let's go back one here. Let's close up the things that I'm not using. And then you have really tactical things, um, which I think are really helpful. You have timers. One minute countdown timer. This is, this looks like a 30 second countdown timer here. And it's just going to go in block. So if you ever have any reason to add a timer, you have multiple different options. you got your lead in. I think actually at the beginning of our video, we use one of these. Uh, if you watched from the very beginning today in ScreenFlow Live, we use one of these flotility assets. I actually think it's this one that we used at the beginning of the video. There you go. You have all of these built in. Oops, that's the wrong button. Let's close this is what I wanted to close. And a whole bunch of different ways of doing countdowns and timers. Maybe it was one of those that we used, actually. But it's a really good way to start a video. If you don't want to really create your own intro, you can just use this. Three, two, one, and here we go. Hey, everyone. Welcome to ScreenFlow Live. Um... We did a previous uh, version of lower thirds in the ScreenFlow Live, but I want to show you the ones that are built into Flotility because I think they're pretty sweet. Let's pull them in here. Oops. Here they are. One. Let me let me start over here. I'm just going to delete everything we've got in this project because we've already been over it all. And let's bring this in and this in and this in and this in. We go. Let's see which what 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 each one of these looks like. The nice part about these is that they're animated, which allows them to continually be moving as you're using them. It's not just kind of like a slow fade in and then your name pops up and then it stops moving. As we watch this one, as it comes in, you can see that there's like shadows and shines happening and a constant morphing, and you can just easily come over to the text box, write your name in it, and pull it on top. And now you've got a lower third talking about somebody's life. Obviously not their life, but you know what I mean. Here's another one, a little uh, ink splotch with wrapping, not wrapping paper, but ripped paper. That one's kind of video game-esque, this one coming in from the right-hand side. And then you got your colors one that pops in. So just some pretty simple lower thirds that are animated and built in that you can just pop text right on top. Now the last section of the flotility stuff, oh, uh, excuse me, is the touch gestures. Gest g touch gestures. All right. And it looks like we have a whole bunch of different skin tones that you can use from. And as you can see, they're all named something slightly different. Pinch, open, and close, Caucasian. Pinch, open, and close, Native American. Uh, African American, excuse me. Tap and hold. So let's let's try the tap and hold and see what that looks like. Finger comes in, taps, holds for a second. If you're teaching somebody how to use an app that you made, boom, you've got this ready to go. Uh, iDevice drag left. Let's pull this one in and see how that looks. 
drags it to the left. And you can, of course, adjust these if maybe it's over here and a little bit smaller. Well, there you go. Now he's doing it from the right-hand side and sliding to the left. And so you have all of these different combinations. Uh, drag right, drag left, flick right, flick left. Uh, and you can essentially teach somebody with these digital hands how to use the software that you've created. One last one before we jump back in. Do we need to list credits if you use these? Definitely not, Scott Rogers. You've paid for them. That's the only credits you need to list. But you don't actually have to list that either. You don't have to say I paid for these. These are all uh, something that we licensed from a company, and we actually now own Flotility. Um, but they uh, they created these a long time. We bought the rights to them, and we're selling them to you. Don't quote me on that because I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know exactly how it works. But when it, when it comes down to it, you have full rights to use them without giving credit to anybody. They've been created for your use specifically. Um. So the last thing that I wanted to talk about are the built-in transitions. And these are, these are uh, all of these other things you, you pull in through your media library. They're files stored on your computer. Whereas the transitions are, once you've downloaded them and installed the transition pack, it is now built into ScreenFlow. So let's grab a couple different videos. Let's do the face shot. because Maybe, maybe for the next show I'll get some different pieces of media. <laughs> I've been using these for a long time. So we've got just the basic cross dissolve, right? Okay, cool. Let's let's go right, stop, right click and show transition inspector. So we have all of our wipes and these are what are built in and you're built in. You've got your bar swipe, your copy machine, your flash, your wipes, all these things. Those are built into ScreenFlow when you download it. But now you have the flotility and you can adjust all of these too. All right, you can't adjust them. You can use any of these is what I meant to say. So let's, let's do balloons. Sound about right? Yeah, I like it. What does balloons look like? <gasps> there you go. The balloons come through. I, I think, personally, not a big fan of the balloons. But if you're making a birthday celebration party, use it. But I don't think that I would use the balloons in any of mine, to tell you the truth. Um, but we've got the blinds vertical wipe. And I like that one a lot too. If you make the transition longer, it takes longer and kind of gets a little chunky. So these ones work better when they're a little bit slower. Yep, I like that. I think that looks good. Yep. And then let's see what else we've got going on here. Camera flash. This one's pretty great. Check this out. <laughs> blind you a little bit um where is the one that oh you know i'm a little bit mistaken there is another section of um another section of flotility that i thought was part of this but it's not because you also have the flotility transitions and these are all a little bit different as well Ooh, i like these ones too all right check these out so there's ones that are built into your transition inspector uh, let's go back to our website so i can show you what, you what i'm talking about one more time built into your transition inspector are the flotility pro transitions packs those are the ones we were just looking at. But in the Flotility Motion Graphics Library, the first one, you also get some transitions. And those are these ones. This, this one I think is really cool, the wood diamond transition. And these are treated differently because they're not used as transitions. What they are is instead of adding a transition, you put this on top of the transition, and this is what you get. Which I think it looks a little bit cooler. Um, let's, let's pull in a different one here. Let's do a uh, caution metal angled transition. Very clever name. Put that right on top of where the transition would be. You could even uh, record yourself making some pretty sweet sound effects. <laughs> oh, I'm having too much fun. Sorry. Um, there's another one that I really want to look at. Lens Flare 3 transition looks pretty sick. And as you can see, some of these, these are all, um, oops, these are all transparency, so you can see what's going on underneath them. Oop, I think I want to move this over just a little bit. Let's see if that works. There we go. Yeah, yeah, that looks pretty good. 
So these are a pretty sophisticated look. Laptop transition. Ooh, this is going to be an interesting one. I'm not sure what this one looks like. <laughs> cool. <laughs> you get a little laptop screen as your transition. I got to say some of them are a little, little strange, but uh, other ones are m really cool. Like I think this one's going to be cool. This is, I think, a burning paper transition. Not burning, but just a folding paper. So you have all of those transitions built into the first option, but then you have the stuff that is built in to your transition inspector in ScreenFlow. Um, I think that my favorite one of these is the classic Comic Pow, just because it's super cool. Batman style. Pow! You know, that's actually a really fitting transition for a uh, cooking show. You guys remember Emerald Lagasse? Bam! You could do your own Emerald Lagasse show, but instead of bam, you'd say pow. You know, you'd be like, and now we're going to put a little bit of salt in there. Pow! Boom, there goes the salt. So, there you go. You get flotility, and you'll be a successful online cooking show personality. It just comes with it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a free add-on. All right, I'm losing my mind a little bit, guys. Uh, that, was, that was what I wanted to show you today, uh, all of the flotility assets that you could possibly put into ScreenFlow. Lots of cool transitions, backgrounds, little graphics that you can easily find places in your videos to use. I'm already thinking about places where I might want to use them in some of my videos, um, especially that timer. Sometimes I want to show how quickly some of our software can do something, and I can use that timer to say, look, I want you to focus on this time right now. But uh, yeah, with that, I just want to say thank you for coming. Please, I'm going to answer a couple more questions here. I'll give you about a minute and a half to put questions into the question zone, and I will answer them. Otherwise, I'll see you guys tomorrow. While we are waiting for questions, I want to say don't forget to sign up to watch us uh, to get the... Don't forget to sign up to get the notification when we go live telestream.net slash screenflow live. There's a form there that you can fill out and we'll send you a little notification saying, hey, don't forget we're going live today. Um, and we also have our social media areas where you can follow us on Twitter. It's at screenflow. On YouTube, we are screenflow tube where we usually screen to stream to, but we've been having some issues today with that. Um, and then of course on Facebook where you're watching right now, screenflow or facebook.com slash screenflow. So follow us at those wonderful places. So do you have to drag the files in every time? Judy Graff, no. Once you drag a file in the first time, you don't have to drag it in again. And if you're using the global media library, which is this part over here, you can drag in whatever you want. Um, so don't worry about dragging it in every single time because the the global the media library allows you to just keep it there. So for example, if I wanted to use this background in every single project that I used, I'd drag it into my uh, media library, my global media library. For some reason, it is not allowing me to do that, but I can just add it as a file. Let's say it's this field bar blank that I want to use every time. And now that's going to be in there all the time. For some reason, it's not showing up here. I think I have to find my other project. But uh, you don't have to drag them in every time. ScreenFlow's media library allows you to pull something in once, and for that project, it will always be there, and then you can add it to your timeline. Or if you use the global media library, you can put it in there, and then every time you open up ScreenFlow, that piece of media will be in the global media library. Awesome. Cool. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Um, I will be... Back here, not for a while, as a matter of fact. I'm going on vacation. Woo! So I won't be uh, doing ScreenFlow Live for a couple weeks, but we'll let you know when the future changes. We've got some